Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. This is Frank Sid, the Binary Archivist. And today we're going to just cover a little bit of history on ANSI art and how it was made and then touch a little bit on how uh, DOS programs used ANSI art a lot for menuing and for things like that back in the day. Now up here I have a page of some of the incredible art. It was this incredible artist who created artwork which took a lot of time to do. As you can see, some of it is very, very detailed. And these were just done from ASCII characters um, using the draw. That was one of the most popular programs in the 90s to create these kind of things. And we'll just kind of take a look at some of the detail here. You can see that was created with ANSI art. And it's... Uh, I mean, you can just see the detail in it. I mean, back in the day, that's really what you had to work with. So this was, I mean, if you could do something like this, you were respected because it was, you know, took a lot of time and, and you know, there was all kinds of art that was available using the ANSI. So how was this done? Well, we have to go back to the roots of DOS to the, the draw program. So we have that here. I'm running my my DOS here in my virtual box. And we'll go into the, the, the draw folder. And then I'll touch on a little bit of Turbo C and how I used the draw to generate H files, which I could then include as uh, headers in my program and kind of use them as a you know welcome screens or design uh, menus to where maybe you want to pick an option option one's going to do this, option two is going to do that. It was just a nice way at that time, instead of having a plain, you know, black and white, ugly screen, you could really make it look nice and make it user friendly, especially when it came to interfaces. So we're going to run the draw here, a little blast from the past here. And this was his 1986 to 93, the draw with great memories. So now when you come into the draw, there would be a bunch of options that you could do here. And if we look at the character sets, you know, the, if you can imagine that from these characters here, it's basically what you're working with, that you could come up with fancy images that look like, let's go to a pretty detail. Now here's one here. It's just, it's just incredible work. So let's go back to here. Uh, if you can imagine that that was done just using these, and that what you would have to do is you would hit your F1 keys. Uh, you could use your F1 keys. You could customize it. But I'm not going to get into drawing something. Just some example here of how you could draw things. And then maybe I wanted to draw a straight line. I could do it like that, you know, so there was all kinds of different, you know, if I did this, I could make kind of a ladder effect here. So this was used, a lot of people who use DOS, you would recognize framing, the different framing that was done. If you go to the character set, you know, you would use, you know, the double framing here to make a uh, you know, frames around your menus and whatnot. And if we load up an example here, and this is just an example that came with the draw, is this shuttle file right here. It's got the ANS extension, so we'll load that up. And as you can see, it's, you know, nothing earth shattering. This is pr just a basic example that they gave you with the program. Um, but still, something like this would take a lot of time. You're sitting here, you know, you can kind of see the, the characterization here. They're using brackets. They're using these um, shaded blocks, which would be here, these shaded blocks here. And just a plethora of different things. You had to be really creative to come up with something. So I, I really give them a lot of credit for all the great artists out there and and certainly when we had were dialing bulletin boards back in the day, we saw a lot of their art, you know, come up. And uh, good for them. You know, hopefully 
many of them went on to be successful at whatever they did. Um, but they were certainly pioneers in the um, ANSI art arena back in the day. So I myself, you know, I would do, I, of course, I ran a BBS in the 90s, and I did all my menus and things like that with ANSI. Uh, but I also used ANSI in my C programming. So you say, well, how, what would you do? Well, you could easily create a menu within the draw here and then export it as an H file and that H file could be included in your program. So let's take a look at what an H file looks like when you export it from the draw. And we'll quit here. Now for me I just made, you know, I was a big Doom player back in the day and I had a buddy Tony and we played Doom. We just had a great time with it. But one of the issues was with the, if we go into the Doom 2, there's a Seer Setup option right here. It would, you'd have to have a bunch of parameters. So we'll look at the, kind of a batch file that would be made to connect. You would have to run the Seer Setup, your COM port, what IRQ it was, um, whether you wanted monsters in the game, whether it was a deathmatch or cooperative. You know, sometimes you would want to call, dial the other person, or you'd want to answer. So that option would be specified here, and you, of course, could warp to a certain level, which would be something here. So, of course, as you can imagine, it would be, you know, be, take a lot more time, especially if you had a disconnection, to reconnect to your buddy if you were playing the game. So what I had thought up was, let me make a, a C program that's going to dynamically generate these batch files for me. So you would create a menu and just have me or my buddy, we would pick uh, certain options from it, and from those options it would generate this file. So let's get into, first I'll show you what the H file looks like. We go in here, I just stick it in this folder. I have a, had a program I wrote called Lat Menu back in the day that would kind of run everything that I, under DOS, so kind of the same principle where I used ANSI screens and generated different batch files from that. So if I want to do an edit, I just want to edit so we can look at this file, welcome.h, and you'll see that it tells you it's a, a screen image from the draw, and it's, boy, that was a long time ago, 94. And you can see it's a bunch of hexadecimal numbers. You can, if you scroll down, you can see the, the blocks in there, which make up the, the ANSI image that we're displaying here. Now in this case this is just a skull image that that I thought would be neat you know for the deathmatch intro once we ran the the program. So just to give you a quick synopsis here we're going to go into the Turbo C and we're going to run Turbo C and you can see here this is my C program where I have you know the standard libraries that I include here and God, this is so long. 1994, this program was written. So, Tony, if you're out there, you know, I've been trying to find you out there. You know, I hope I, hope I talk to you again. A good friend of mine. Um, and this will all, he, he would love all this stuff. I mean, we just had a ball with it. But here's where I include the welcome H file. Okay? And I'm not going to get into a lot of this C programming now, but I'm definitely going to touch on it on a later video. But I'm basically using the get key here. I'm defining a bunch of variables. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to put text. And this is really what's going to print out that ANSI to the screen. And, and the welcome is the designation that's created in the H file. Uh, for the array, which is called welcome. And basically it's going to, while the keyboard's not being hit, it's going to increment the color count variable, and it's going to cycle it through 10 times, which is going to give you different colors. So my idea was just to put, you know, have the skull up there, and then have the eyeballs kind of changing colors. And uh, here we have the, the right eye of the skull and the left eye, and I'm using the go2xy to put the those dots on certain points of the screen that I wanted to. It's not, it's not that complicated, but these are just creative 
ways you can do things and and uh, have fun, have fun with your programming. So here I'm creating a, a function here. I'm clearing the screen. I'm changing the text color to white. I'm adding a bunch of new line characters, and I'm printing all this stuff out on the screen. And then I'm taking a, a, a get key and I'm changing it to uppercase, and then using the switch statement in C. And if the if it's K, it's going to set the match variable to that parameter. And if it was T, it would set the match parameter to this, which would give you the different modes for deathmatch or cooperative. And it's going to do that while choice is not equal to OX1B. So what my memory escapes me a little bit, but I think that's the escape character. So it would loop until you hit escape. Then it would exit the program. That's if you didn't pick an option. So I'm not going to get into that too much here. I'm basically opening a, a stream. I'm opening a file. I'm going to open a, a batch file that I'm, that I'm going to create. And then I'm going to stream out this sir setup command. And you can see the, uh, the percent %s designations here are where the options that I pick are going to end up. It's going to write those options out. Okay, so then it says generation complete, and I'm making a call to the BIOS here, just for the BIOS function. I put all of those in the, my programs, just to you know, to, for key functions, hit the keys, things like that. Um, so let's get out of there, and we'll run the program and just kind of see what what it would look like. So basically, there's the ANSI skull from a long time ago, created with the draw. Now the eyeballs that you see blinking there are the loop that I showed you in the program. It's going through the colors. Not, not terribly complicated. It's looping now and waiting for me to press a key, so I press a key. And it says, hello, Tony, we meet again. You have fought tough against the Siberian, but you are not happy enough until you rid of him once and for all. You're a hardcore marine who never gives up. What do your instincts tell you to do? Kill or team up? So now if you hit kill, it's going to set it to deathmatch mode. If you hit it to team up, it's going to be cooperative. So we'll just do kill for now. And usually we'd agree on a level, so I'm just going to say two in here. And we would decide who would call and who would answer, because with your modem you'd have to pick who was going to call, who was going to answer. Sometimes my buddy thought that because if he called me that I had the advantage in the game. Maybe that was true, maybe not, but we're just going to say we're calling and it's going to display the parameters that were set in the program and I just hit the key and it's going to generate the batch file for me. Now this made it a lot easier because all we had to do was go in and run those options and it would generate the batch file very quickly. So if we had a disconnection, we could run it again, and it would reconnect us. So if we just take a look at that DMAT, which we did already, but I'll just kind of give you another look at it. That's basically what it generates. And that was enough to run the game. So that's just a little bit of, uh, a little bit of programming there, but there's so many creative things you can do, and uh, I'd like to get into the C programming a lot more. You know, um, the Java, a lot of the languages came from C. Java is very similar in s the syntax with C. C is very much used today. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can do with it. Uh, your imagination and creativity is the only limit to it. But I try to tell people don't, when you get into programming, try to do fun things like that. Try to make you know, you could be the best programmer in the world, but if you, you want to be able to solve problems in a creative way, if you can do that, you can call yourself a programmer and just have fun with it. You know, do something that makes something easier. You know, make some, your life easier. Automate something. You know, generate some, a file with some options that's dynamic. That you, you Maybe you find yourself doing the same things all the time. Well, you could, you could write a batch file 
and you can run your programs that way and if things are changing all the time you can you know set yourself up a menu and select it and it would dynamically generate it so we'll exit that here well I really didn't have to do that and we'll go back in to the draw here and we are going to go in and see if we can't load we're going to load that ANSI and that's basically what the ANSI that I have in my program when it was designed would look like and then I would save it as an H file so it's very very handy with C um, when I discovered that I could include you know ANSI as an H file into my C programs it really changed a lot back then because I could be a lot more creative with the menuing with, with creating different uh, opening screens for things a lot of the old DOS programs used you know if you look at like an X-Tree Gold or anything like that they would have the um, in fact they would have usually these double double corners here you know, creating a frame around the the, the the menu. Let's see if I have some more stuff here. So I did create some menu stuff back in the day. Oh, here's some here. This is kind of a kind of a <laughs> it kind of looks like a laptop. I think that was my feeling back then. And this would be like a, a menu system that I created back in the day. Let's kind of look at, it kind of makes me laugh at some of the stuff that I spent all this time on back in the day. You know, isn't that true? If necessity is a mother of invention, creativity is a father. So this is another, kind of another screen to my menu there that I had made. Let's see. Go back. this one there's kind of some more stuff so what these would do is overlay each other and it would appear as the, as my C program would control all of these screens it would appear as if the changes were happening within this the screen of this uh, virtual laptop apparently that I was creating back then because everything else would stay the same but what would change would be in here. So it gives the illusion that it's, it's, it's writing on the screen of the laptop. So I thought that was kind of fun. I, I had way too much time on my hands apparently, but all of these exercises brought me to where I am today, where I, you know, with the programming stuff. No project is too small. You know, when you want to get into programming, you know, you don't have to start off creating some big program that's going to play chess against a you know, professional chess player or that's going to shoot a rocket from the earth. Just start off basic, you know, start with your basic thing. You know, you're going to need to take input from users. You're going to need to print things on the screen. You want to learn how to open and close files. You know, all of those basic functions are what every program is made of. It's the architecture of the program. And things have changed, but once you know those basic principles, you can transfer and translate those principles to any language today. So, you know, even if you start off with something small, start it off small and make sure it's fun and make sure you're having fun with it and, you, and that's all that matters. So that's it for today. Kind of a convoluted, mixed kind of um, presentation of everything, but I want to show the, the draw and how I used it back in the day. Of course, I used it on the bulletin board as well. That's primarily where it was used, but it was very, very useful with interface design. So thanks for watching my video, and I'm gonna do some more of these, and we'll get into some C programs, some more, <coughs> excuse me, some more DOS stuff, and uh, thanks for watching my video.